Hey guys, it's Coding Jesus, and today we will be talking about fold expressions, which is a feature added to C17. Now, I haven't seen fold expressions used very often in the wild, which is surprising given just how powerful they are. Hence, I believe that fold expressions are one of the most underrated features in C17. So what are fold expressions? Well, fold expressions are often used when you want to work with more than one input template parameter. So before we actually get to fold expressions, we need to actually look at template parameters and better understand them so that we can really appreciate the power of fold expressions. Now, prior to the introduction of variadic templates in C++11, one had to write different versions of a template function for a given amount of parameters. After variadic templates were introduced, that was alleviated. If one wants to use variadic templates for recursion, some extra logic is still required. Let's take a look at recursion with a variable number of arguments in C11 and then have a look at how fold expressions alleviates the need for variadic templates when dealing with recursive functions. Here we have a recursive function that uses variadic templates. This is just a recursive function that takes in a variable number of arguments. To make this function possible, like all recursive functions, we need an exit condition. We can't keep recursing forever. That exit condition takes the form of our non-variadic overload of variadic multiply, the first function you see in front of you. That being variadic multiply that returns a one. That is our exit condition. Given this function, four variables, each being 10, we get the result 10,000. This is equivalent to 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times one. Notice I mentioned one at the end. We'll get to that in a second. For those of you that are new to C++, you're probably looking at this and you're confused already as to what's actually going on. So let me explain what's going on here in this templatized variadic multiply. A variadic multiply can be broken down as such. Notice how I did not provide the template types to variadic multiply this time. I don't need to, as these types are deduced in C17. Our line expands to 10 times variadic template multiply with three parameters of 10, then 10 times 10 times variadic multiply with two parameters of 10, then 10 times 10 times 10 with one what one parameter variadic multiply being 10, and then 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 with variadic multiply that takes no parameters and returns one. Hence the one I previously mentioned that I said I will get back to. Notice that in the last line, we have no arguments to pass to variadic multiply. We have hit our exit condition, which is why we need the overload of variadic multiply, which takes zero parameters. Now that we understand writing recursive functions with a variable number of arguments in C++, let's take a look at fold expressions and see how we can write the equivalent using fold expressions in C++17. Fold expressions have strange semantics, but once you get used to them, you'll grow to appreciate their simplicity and their beauty. Here we have fold multiply, which is equivalent to variadic multiply. As you can see, there is no function overload or exit condition. This fold multiply can actually be simplified by removing the times one at the end of it. I simply included the times one in the first fold multiply to kind of remind you of that times one exit condition that previously existed in our variadic multiply, which now does not need to exist. So what's going on here? Well, let's take a look at what's going on here and how this simple args times fold or times parameter pack rather is expanding to 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Fold expressions can either be unary or binary. Unary in the sense that the fold is to the left of the or right of an operator and binary when it's scrunched in between two. Now, when I say fold, what I really mean is the parameter pack, which is represented by those three dots, dot, dot, dot. The first and third row in this table show us unary fold expressions and the second and fourth show us binary. P represents an expression that contains an unexpanded parameter pack. Init represents an expression that does not contain an unexpanded parameter pack. Op is, an, is any of the binary operators listed at the bottom of this table. When I mentioned that init represents an expression that does not contain an unexpanded parameter pack, 
What I meant was in our context or in our previous example, that was the one that you saw in the args times parameter pack times one. One was the init. As you can see on the right side of this table, we have P1 to Pn, where n is the amount of elements in the parameter pack. I won't be going over each row in detail in this table, so if you'd like to take a longer look at this table, you can pause this video now. So now you know how fold multiply works. Our initial fold multiply function that takes in four parameters, each with a value of 10, expands to 10,000 as such. 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Okay, so by now you hopefully understand fold expressions. Let's take a look at a real world example for some practice. I've laid out some code in front of you. Now I know it looks like it's a lot, but it's not really. I'll walk you through it all. Essentially, we have a class called animal. I called it animal for whatever reason because I hate calling things A, B, C, D. So I just gave it the word animal. That takes in a pointer to a logger in the constructor. We then use a fold expression in our public log messages function to print multiple separate messages to the screen in one line. Let's take a look at this, at, at this in action in an IDE. As you can see in your screen right now, or in my IDE to be more pre precise, I copied and pasted the exact code that you just saw moments ago into Godbolt. As you can see here, we have our class logger, which simply takes in a class name as well as a message. And we have animal that takes in a pointer to a logger object. Let's take a look at the actual function that's using fold expressions in our animal class. What I'm doing here is I am saving a lambda in a variable called log message. And in this lambda, I'm able to access logger by capturing this, a pointer to this animal object. And I pass in a single argument that is then forwarded or passed rather to be more precise to log, to loggers log. Now what I'm doing here is I want to log as many messages as I have arguments. So I'm using a fold expression to then expand log message to as many log message commands as I have arguments. Let's take a look at how this will work in action. And then let's discuss why somebody might do something like this. So let's say in a given function, in this case it's main, we want to log three separate messages, but still within that function. So we want to have one function and we want to have three different log messages, that being three different lines of log messages for a given action. So let's say we're in this function in main, something happens and we want three separate log messages. Well, that's fine because we can pass hello as one log message, world as another log message, and I'm currently filming something. I hope my keyboard isn't too loud as a third log message. Now, of course, these are const char stars and these will be implicitly cast or implicitly converted into strings. But what I'm actually doing here is I will end up printing out three different messages. So I will end up printing out, as you can see, hello, world, and animal. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I hope you learned a lot. If you did, like, comment, and subscribe. It not only goes to helping me because I don't have a big marketing department or a massive platform that I can push out my videos, but it also helps you so you can keep up to date with the latest in my own work, help you become better not only as a professional, but also as an individual as you go about growing in your daily life. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Cheers.